This time of the year is always problematic for my admin assistant, Barbara King. She's here tonight. Because at this time of the year, she has to literally round up 12 people for the foot washing rite as part of the Mass of the Lord's Supper that begins that sacred three-day period called the Triduum that Deacon Chip talked about before Mass started. Now, people are seem to be reluctant to participate. And there probably are different reasons for this. One of the reasons which I saw quite a bit up in Dyersburg when I was at Holy Angels those four years was that very often Holy Week showed up as spring break in the county school system. So my core parishioners would all leave town. I always thought it was very strange. They were there Sunday after Sunday after Sunday. And when we finally hit the high holy days, they're all gone. Like, where are they when I need them? Kind of a thing. It even happened here with somebody we wanted to ask too, by the way, since this year our school's been out for spring break this past week. But there's another reason why they're very reluctant. In fact, they're very uneasy about doing this. Because they feel that having their feet washed by the pastor or another priest in their parish is very humiliating kind of work. Very humbling work. Well, I look at it as being kind of special work. So it doesn't bother me at all. But that's not the way it was in first century Palestine when it came to foot washing. You see, there weren't very many paved roads. Yes, the Romans built roads in order to transport the Roman legion from one part of the empire to another. You know, all roads lead to Rome, that kind of an idea. But in the backwater of first century Palestine, most of the roads were dirt. It might not even be called a road as such. So people, whether or not they wore sandals or just were barefoot, were always walking in the dirt. They were walking in the mud when it happened to rain. And they were walking through other things. And you can imagine what those other things were. So their feet were all dirty and crusty and smelly and everything else you can think of. And it was wonderfully refreshing to be invited to someone's home and have somebody meet you at the door and wash your feet clean. Very refreshing indeed. Now, that was such a humbling, humiliating situation that it was normally done by the household servants or slaves. None of them or not enough of them. Then the children helped out. Not enough of them. Well, I'm sorry, ladies. The wife did it. The master of the household would never do it. That's the background of the foot washing that Jesus does in today's gospel. You see, Jesus had now come to the end of his public ministry. Remember, he had proclaimed the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is at hand. And he was an itinerant faith healer and preacher and teacher. And he actually sent his apostles two by two to participate in that, that mission. But that was coming to an end. And he had also celebrated untold number of dinners, suppers with his apostles over the course of what's about three years in John's Gospel. But he knew that this supper would be different than any of the others. And to put it in kind of modern jargon, he wanted to do some things so off the wall at that dinner that when they look back and remember, they would be very impressed. It would stick in their minds. And so one of those extraordinary things that he did, one of those off the wall things, was that he played the role of the slave and got down and washed his apostles' feet. If you listen closely to Deacon Mike when he proclaimed the gospel, you'll notice that Jesus didn't seem to have any sort of discussion with any of the apostles except one guy. The typical guy that always spoke up, Peter. 
And Peter says in his mind, this isn't right. Why are you doing this? Did you listen to the peculiar answer Jesus said? What I am doing, you do not understand now. But you will understand later. And then he went on to say, I have given you a model to follow so that as I have done for you, you should do also to each other. Holy Thursday is often called Maundy Thursday, which is a corruption of a Latin word called mandatum. We get the word mandate from it. Commandment. He's telling them that they need to go and do likewise for one another. They need to wash people's feet. Because he was doing something that was symbolic of what he was all about. Service. But that doesn't satisfy Peter, does it? So finally, Jesus says to him, look, Peter, if you don't allow me to do this, I wash my hands of you. He says, okay, uh, if I do not do this, you will not have any inheritance with me. Unless I wash you, you will have no inheritance with me. He will not benefit from what's about to happen the next day, his suffering, death, and resurrection. So he forces Peter to do that. Why was Jesus so adamant about foot washing? Foot washing. Well, he was giving them that mandate, right? And since he gave them that mandate, he gives you and I the same mandate 2,000 years later as his disciples to do. But why did he also do that? What was he trying to say? Well, I think he's trying to say to you and me, 2,000 years removed from the actual event, that he wants to be of service to us also. And how is he of service to us also? Can't see it because it's covered in purple right now. But through his suffering, death, and resurrection, the Paschal mystery. But you know, there's something that we need to always keep in mind. You see, we do not know who Jesus really is unless we're willing to admit, unless we're willing to realize we need to be saved. When you watch the news and you hear the discourse going around, do you think our society thinks it needs to be saved? They push God out of everyday life. You can't mention God's name in public. You can't say Merry Christmas some places. You can't say prayers the way you used to. Society has no need for God. They pushed it away. But it's only when we realize the need we need to be saved, we know who Jesus is. Jesus in Greek. Joshua in Hebrew. Yahweh saves, God saves, the Savior. What's been our mystery of faith throughout all of Lent? And it's going to be through all of Easter. Save us, Savior of the world. For by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. And how do we keep connected to that power and love of that service, that great saving that Jesus does? Well, we do prayer, don't we? We in the Catholic Church have sacraments, particularly the sacrament of the Eucharist, in which we keep this connection to Jesus through the centuries. That's the second off-the-wall thing that he did. He instituted the Holy Eucharist, Holy Communion, the Blessed Sacrament. He would not leave us orphans. We come here this evening to remember. But it's a special kind of remembering. We remember Jesus' birth, don't we? We remember an historical event. But guess what? When we come together for the Triduum, we're not just remembering an historical event, like I'm just going to pretend like I'm Jesus washing feet, or things like that. 
No, we're remembering, remember, put back together again. We need to have the effects of that first Holy Thursday night in our lives. We need to follow that mandatum, that commandment, to wash each other's feet, to be of service to others. We need to allow Jesus to enter us so that we can become more like him. We may not understand completely why Jesus had to suffer and die for us. We may not completely understand why a certain wafer of bread and a certain cup with wine is the real presence, the real connection, the sacramental presence of Jesus in our lives that we're receiving within us. We may not completely understand how that works. We may not completely understand why God so loved the world that he sent his only son to redeem us. But you did notice again what Jesus said to Peter. He says to us, what I'm doing, you do not understand now, but you will understand later. <laughs>